Well, hello friends, Pastor Randy here. Welcome to Making It Simple. Always great to be with you. We're going to jump right back into our lesson. We're talking about watching our words. Now, what I want you to understand, what I'm trying to, to show, what I'm trying to teach in this is not to be, again, not to be redundant, not to be repetitive, not to keep on. But words matter. Words change everything everything. And as we break down this chapter from the book of James, we continue to see more and more reasons as to why what we say and how we say it is so important. Again, it's not to just drag it out so that we can have multiple lessons, but when we look at different things, and the, the next part of this, it says the, the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? The word defile, all right, I want you to hear this lesson. I'm going to read this because I don't want to miss any parts of this, all right? So the word defile, when defined, it means to make filthy or dirty, to debase the pureness or purity of, to profane or sully, to tarnish one's reputation, to violate the chastity of another. Well, I don't know about you, but none of that sounds good. None of that sounds good. And all of that, every single bit of that is caused by not watching our words. And this is what James is saying. He's saying this one little weapon of mass destruction that we can communicate with, it can defile the whole body. Now, when we look at that, not only can that speak of individually, ourselves, we can make ourselves look filthy, dirty, profane, all this other stuff. But we can do that to others as well. And let's take it one step further. We, as believers, what do we call ourselves? The body of Christ. We can defile the body. And it happens all the time. You see, Again, I try, I try, I try, I try, I try to not be critical of others, all right, unless there is a reason. And this is why I teach in the manner that I do, because I, I realize that the things that is said, whether publicly or even in a private conversation, that doesn't just represent me. That represents the Lord. And when you stand behind a pulpit, or you sit in a chair and you make a video or what, whatever your platform is. If the things coming out of your mouth do not honor and, and revere the name of Christ and do not honor and, and help others to get to a better place, then be quiet. And the reason that I say it that way is because there are many within the ministry ranks who don't do that. They scream and they yell and they point fingers. And the problem a lot of times with that, with that finger pointing, and we've all heard this old saying, is the problem with that finger pointing is there's three more pointing back at you and a whole bunch of them have been hearing that lately. That's why Pastor Andy don't throw rocks because he knows him. But I don't, I, I have no, I have absolutely no validity in the ability to throw rocks. I know the value of words, and the older I get, the more I value them. The way that we talk to each other, not just in a demeaning way, but in a, in a way that lifts one up. Not just to let them hear what they want to hear, but to make things better, to improve. Because why? I'm representing Christ. So we can defile the body. And so we as believers, as pastors, as teachers, as leaders, and as just general believers overall, we need to be mindful of that. We can defile the body of Christ. We can make others say, I don't want anything to do with that. Just because of the things that we say, the judgmental things, the critical things. I love this. I saw this the other day. And it said, and this is, this is true, John 3, 17. And Jesus said, I did not come into the world to condemn the world. I came to save the world. Someone took a, you know, liberty with that the other day. Say, if God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, he didn't send you there to do it either. James tells us that we, we understand the power of words as we begin to look through this. And so when we understand not watching our words is problematic, 
James says that this, the power of this, the source of this uh, destruction, he says that the tongue is set on fire by hell. We talked about that yesterday. The, the wickedness of the enemy, the, the wickedness of, of, of the nature that is given in this, um, we can find this in hurtful and destructive words. We see it all the time. I talked about it yesterday, you know, te tearing a, a child down or what have you. But, but we have to understand that the, the enemy uses the untamed tongue for a intentional purpose, for something that, 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 is, that leads to more problems. And what is that? Dividing people, keeping people at odds. Right now in our current climate, there is probably very few things more divisive than politics. Absolutely horrifying, all right? Second, probably only to religion. And of course, that's a whole entire different story. And I make it very, very clear. Everything that I talk about, I had someone challenge me on that the other day. They uh, left a comment, uh, you know, said, well, yeah, well, you know, nothing divides like religion. I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you at all. It's, it's probably one of the more hurtful and divisive things that's ever been existed. But that's not what I talk about. I talk about Jesus, and that is relationship. Jesus, here's, here's the clear, clear point on that. You want to talk about religion? You want to talk about the relation, relationship? You want to see the differential between the two? Jesus had problem with religious people as well. They killed him. So yeah, religion can be a problem. It can be very divisive. And so does the enemy use that? Every day every day. And so what we find here is when we don't watch our words, it becomes problematic. And, it, and, and we've seen families destroyed. We've seen wars start. We've seen churches divide. And that list could just go on and on and on. I mean, there, there's really no limit. Idle and hateful words are damaging. One may ask, well, how? I mean, it's just words, right? You know, again, all the old sayings, sticks and stones, words will never hurt me, rolls off my back like a duck in the water. Here's the destructive nature. They spread. He says it's set on fire by hell. The destructive nature of a fire. All right. We, again, we touched on this. Once it starts, once it starts, if it's not quickly extinguished, it gains ground really, really fast, really, really fast. And oftentimes, the ending of it, the extinguishing of it, is too late. The, re the results, the damage is already done. That's why words, they begin a, a, a pattern, you know, gossip and rumors and whatever. But it starts spreading like wildfire, man. It goes all over the place. And before you know it, someone's life is really harmed. We see it all the time, in, again, in politics in today's world of, or, or just the divisive nature of, I don't like you. And so the way that I can hurt you is say something about you. And the way that I can make that more important is if I can say something about you and I can get it on TV. I'm not asking whether it's true. I don't care whether it's true. I just want to hurt you. And the way that I do that is with words. See, friends, we got to watch what we say before it ever comes out. Because while we can offer later a regret, we can offer a I'm sorry, oftentimes it's too late because the damage is already done. The, the, the comparison of that to a fire is much like once the house burns to the ground, it can be replaced, it can be rebuilt, but it can't replace the loss that you suffered, the grief that you suffered. So while something new can be put in its place, the I'm sorry can come, the destruction, that takes a whole lot longer to fix. We need to be mindful. We need to watch our words. Why is this important? We'll continue to talk about this tomorrow when we come back right here for a little more, making it simple. God bless you, friends.